So I uh, do not have any disclosures. So this is a 56 year old female, di long standing diabetic, presented with typical chest angina, typical angina for the last one year, increased last three months. Her ECG and echo was normal, uh, stress test was positive for ischemia. She was referred for coronary, invasive coronary angiogram. So right dominant, mid RCA shows some plaque. On the left side, LCX has some minor plaque. Again, Austral LED has some minor plaque. So this was her angiogram. Again, when we see the literature, angina pectoris is, affects more than 100 million people globally. Mostly, they, ha they are with non-obstructive coronary artery disease. Recently, in a registry, in a Swedish registry, which included uh, 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 individuals between 50 to 64, presenting with typical angina who underwent CT coronary angiogram, it showed only 12% of the patient had obstructive coronary artery disease. Also, recently published in JAK, uh, for insights from ischemia trial showed 13% of laboratory confirmed moderate to severe ischemia had no obstructive coronary artery disease. And again, persistence or recurrence of angina after PCI can affect up to 20 to 40% of the patient on short, short term and medium term follow up. And this is also seen in patients whose results have been optimized with FFR. So in the last two decades, there is uh, increasing importance of coronal microvascular dysfunction, vascular spasm as one of the important co uh, cause of myocardial ischemia. So this is, this is a syndrome which has been termed as INOCA, that is ischemia and no obstructive coronary artery disease. And Japanese Cardiac Society recently in 2023 uh, defines INOCA as stable chronic symptoms with objective finding of myocardial ischemia uh, detected on ECG or ECHO or any uh, imaging techniques and on invasive angiogram, a non-flow limiting, that is less than 50% uh, uh, blockage or uh, normal FFR. So Inoka, Inoka is broadly classified into two categories, microvascular angina and epicardial vasospastic angina. And uh, the third category is mixed uh, variety, which includes both. So again, microvascular angina is broadly classified into structural and functional. Structural, which is remodeling because of microvasculature leading to fixed or reduced microvascular conductance and vasomotor, which is again microvascular spasm. So this uh, uh, diagram depicts the same thing what we uh, described. So a study showed uh, when we see the prevalence of different varieties, isolated microvascular constitute around 50%, isolated vasospastic 20% and mixed variety 17%. Mixed variety has the worst prognosis of 50. So if you see the epidemiology, uh, th this has a strong female preponderance. And a multicentric US study showed 40% of the patient undergoing coronary angiogram have no obstructive coronary artery disease. And there is uh, high, uh, this is high uh, in uh, women compared to men. Clinical presentation is just like typical chronic angina, stable angina, exertional symptoms. And in terms of prognosis, they have long-term uh, uh, bad prognosis with high MACE events, which include myocardial infarction, stroke, heart failure, including death. So uh, recently, a meta-analysis was published which clearly showed uh, patients with low CFR are associated with 3.7 times high mortality, 3.4 times high MACE event rate compared to patient having normal CFR. So now coming to diagnosis of INOCA, it can be evaluated both invasively as well as non-invasively. And a 2021 ACCHA guideline uh, gave class 2A indication for non-invasive diagnostic method using stress PET or stress MRI with myocardial blood flow uh, reserve. So amongst the non-invasive modalities, echocardiogram is a simple tool which is used to identify epicardial coronary blood flow, both at uh, uh, hyperemia as well as base level, and this will be used to calculate CFR. And uh, CFR less than 2.5 is an indication of uh, CMD. So cardiac PET is considered to be the most reliable and preferred non-invasive modality for evaluating INOCA. So this detects myocardial blood flow and thereby myocardial flow reserve. And myocardial flow reserve, more than 2.3 is considered to be normal, less than 1.5 is suggestive of uh, CMD. So the, uh, this is a diagram which shows uh, uh, CMD by a scan, uh, nuclear scan. It, it causes mild generalized diffuse uh, decrease in the defect with no transmural defects. So MRI also detects CMD by uh, 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 detecting myocardial perfusion reserve and MPR less, less than or equal to 1.5 is uh, suggestive of CMD. 
However, all these non-invasive modalities come with limitation. The positive predictive value is limited by presence of obstructive coronary artery disease and it cannot dif uh, distinguish different uh, endotypes. Now coming to invasive test for comprehensive evaluation of ENOCA. It will be, it is done with uh, three, under three steps. Wire-based microvascular assessment, acetylcholine provocation test and uh, imaging. So uh, in coronary physiology is uh, testing is done by Coroventis Cor uh, Coroflow system by Abbott and it's a 0.014 wire which include three sensors, proximal and distal temperature sensor and distal pressure sense sensor. It detects coronary flow reserve and uh, IMR along with FFR and RFR. So what is a uh, CFR, coronary flow reserve? So it is a hyperemic coronary blood flow upon the basal blood flow. It is measured by thermodilation technique and it is not specific to microvasculature. It is potentially affected by epicardial coronary artery disease, hemodynamic, resting hemodynamics and uh, basal coronary blood flow. In comparison to CFR, IMR is also measured by thermodilution at hyperemia. It in integrates hyperemic flow and distal coronary pressure to determine microvascular resistance. And it evaluates micro uh, circulation independent of epicardial flow and systemic hemodynamic as comparison to CFR, which is affected by them. So a CFR va uh, value of less than or uh, 2 to 2.5 and IMR more than 2.25 indicates CMD. So uh, uh, the, in, in, in this case, when, whenever it is tested, a patient requires some preparation, which includes holding long-acting calcium channel blockers, caffeine, long-acting nitrates, alpha and beta blockers. So before starting, we need to flush the guide with uh, room temp uh, saline, normal saline, to remove contrast or blood, and then the temperature is zeroed. And then there are totally three, uh, injection of 3cc saline is given to uh, determine the baseline uh, uh, transit time, then hyperemia is induced with adenosine and again three injections are done finally to compute the results. So bolus, uh, the first, uh, the blue color depicts the resting flow and uh, after hyperemia, the yellow color. So in this, it shows the uh, guide has been cleared of the contrast by giving saline and we should make sure uh, the sensor is at between six to nine centimeter from the guide tip. So that patient final results were, was FFR 0.89, PDPA 0.93, CFR decreased to IMR high more than 25. So this was a typical case of uh, uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction. So however, that was very typical, but there are some cases where we get some discordance in the value. The first one is uh, normal FFR with the increased CFR and decreased IFR, that is normal variant, that is normal. The second one, and C, it shows increased FFR but reduce CFR less than two and uh, normal IFR less than 25. So that uh, indicates patient does not have any significant epicardial coronary disease. However, he can have a diffuse atherosclerotic narrowing. The last one is uh, high FFR, but decrease CFR and IMR, which our patient had. This is very typical of coronary microvascular dysfunction. Uh, it is important to classify this because the prognosis also depends on that. So in, if you see in the red one, uh, where the CFR is low, IMR is high, that is typical of CMD, the hazard ratio is 5.6. So the events are quite high in this patient. And in, uh, in category C, where CFR is reduced, but normal uh, IMR, still the hazard ratio is 2.1. That means even these patients have, though they have diffuse atherosclerotic narrowing, on long-term basis, they have uh, high MACE events. So next is a vasoreactivity test. It is done by using acetylcholine. It is available in the powdered form. It is uh, diluted with the dilu uh, diluent to require dilution. It is administered by hand injection into six French guide. Should be given very slowly. This should be followed by final uh, nitroglycerin injection. On the left system, the uh, uh, it is uh, th this is the protocol baseline. So, you know, uh, uh, angiogram is taken. Then 20 milli microgram is given slowly. Angiogram is taken after one minute waiting. Then again, uh, if there is no vasospasm, gradually it is increased up to 200. This is followed by 100 microgram of uh, NTG. And if there is any coro severe coronary vasospasm, then we have to stop without going further. On the uh, right side, the, uh, we, uh, it is less quantity is used. So the final interpretation of uh, acetylcholine is in normal response, there are no symptoms, uh, either there's vasodilatation or less than 20% vasoconstriction. 
to define it as microvascular spasm, patient should have symptom with ECG agent without my epicardial spasm. And in, if it is more than 20% spasm, less than 90, it is called as endothelial dysfunction. And typical epicardial coronary spasm, if there is a severe more than 90% luminal narrowing. So myocardial bridging, uh, which is uh, identified on uh, uh, IVAS, it can be seen as echolucent half moon sign, which is uh, shown on the, with the red dots. It is detected by uh, DFFR, dobutamine stress FFR, wherein uh, the wire is crossed uh, beyond the myocardial bridging segment and then dobutamine is started and then FFR is calculated. That will show whether the lesion along with the myocardial bridging can induce ischemia or not. So with this, COVIDIS has defined invasively uh, both the epicardial uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction with CFR less than two, IMR more than 25, and coronary artery spasm with severe vasoconstriction more than 90%. So moving forward again uh, in 2020, D. Maria first described a pressure, pressure wire free method of de uh, deriving IMR using angiographic based software by counting the number of frames at which the uh, blood flows. So this is a non-invasive modality of identifying IMR without wire. So it was started, how it began was from uh, Doppler with, uh, and then uh, thermodilation technique using CFR IMR and then finally now uh, non-wire based uh, computer derived IMR. So what is the importance? Uh, recently in 2020, Cormica trial was published, one year data from Cormica trial, which revealed patient who are identified with uh, invasive modality of uh, CMD, and then therapy is targeted according to, they had on short term, six months and uh, one year follow, up, a significant redu reduction in angina compared patient who were treated without uh, uh, invasive FFR mo uh, IFR modality. So gui uh, European guidelines give class 2A indication for invasive assessment. Also American guidelines also classify as class 2A indication. So recently uh, European consensus uh, came out with the protocol of assessment of uh, coronary microvascular uh, INOCA. So which shows the first uh, patient has to undergo angiogram and then FFR, CFR, IMR, style choline challenge test to classify them uh, different endotypes. And after once it has been identified, therapy is targeted according to that. Microvascular angina can be treated with beta blocker, CCBs, nicorandyl, ranulosine, evabradin, and uh, vasospastic or calcium channel blocker, nitrate and nicorandyl. So to conclude, uh, INOCA is common, but frequently dismissed entity in the medical community. Reassurance is ineffective. It is, uh, it is not a diagnosis, but a working diagnosis that requires a thorough and thoughtful evaluation in order to identify the underlying etiology. And identifying the precise uh, underlying etiology can guide therapy and improve patient's quality of life. Thank you.